If somebody's preferences violate an axiom of the rational choice model, they can very easily be exploited by what's called the money pump. The rational choice model is a simple model for understanding people's decision making in social and economic situations, and it has two basic axioms the model does. The first is completeness, and the second is transitivity. Completeness means that on a set of choices, a rational actor should have, for every pair of choices, a preference of one over the other, or they should be indifferent between the two, and so view them as equivalent in a sense. And transitivity means exactly what you would expect. If the rational actor prefers A to B and B to C, then they must prefer A to to see. Together, these two axioms guarantee that on a set of choices, a rational actor will have a potentially not unique optimal choice that maximizes utility of some sort based on their preferences. And of course, rational choice theory assumes that people are rational actors who make decisions rationally based on the incentive of maximizing their profit in some sense. For an example, suppose a rational actor has these three three choices, A, B, and C. Perhaps he prefers A to B, which we can represent with this arrow showing the preference relation. A is preferred to B. Perhaps he also prefers B to C. Now what about their preference between A and C? Well, remember the axiom of completeness. There has to be either complete indifference between these two options, or there has to be a strict preference of one over the other. And in this case, in order to not violate transitivity, it must be that the rational actor prefers A to C. Remember, if A is preferred to B and B to C, then A must also be preferred to C. The preference must be transitive. The way we drew the first two arrows forced the third arrow, but there is another way a rational actor could have preferences among these three choices. It is possible that he prefers A to B and A to C. Then what can we say about his preference between B and C? Well, it may be, for example, that he prefers C to B, and thus we see a transitive relationship where A is preferred to C and C to B, and thus A is preferred to B. But it would also be valid for the actor to view B and C as equivalent. He may be indifferent between these two options. This model of his preferences also satisfies transitivity, A to B, B to C, and thus A to C, or A to C, C to B, and thus A to B. You can see, even though it's a little different, transitivity is still satisfied. Now, there are interesting arguments that could be had regarding the completeness axiom and how a reasonable real world situation may fail to conform to this axiom and thus potentially make the model invalid and less useful. However, today I want to focus on the transitivity axiom and how a money pump can be used to exploit somebody who does not obey this axiom. Let's leave behind those boring letters and get a more concrete example. We're considering three choices, going on a haunted hayride, going to a haunted house alone, and going to a haunted house with your family. I'm going to have to zoom out a little here to fit all of these choices on screen. Now let's talk about how someone could have intransitive preferences among these three choices. We're going to talk about our friend Mr. Ick here. Now let's say Mr. Ick prefers to go on a haunted hayride to going to a haunted house alone. Haunted house alone, that's pretty scary. Hay hayride is a, a lot more fun, you know, so there's the preference. But on the other hand, if Mr. Ick could choose between going to a haunted house with his family or going on the haunted hayride, well, going to the haunted house with his family would definitely change things, and he would prefer that option in that case. Then, transitivity would force Mr. Ick to prefer going to the haunted house with his family to going to the haunted house alone. The thing is, Mr. Ick is a little bit concerned with his appearances, and he doesn't want to appear cowardly. When considering these two choices, if he has to go to the haunted house and he gets to choose if he's going alone or with his family, he doesn't want to appear cowardly and is attracted by the courage and respect he may earn by going to the haunted house alone. And so between these two choices, he may prefer to go to the haunted house alone, thus forming a cycle which breaks transitivity and leaves him vulnerable 
vulnerable to exploitation. As it so happens, a devious fellow by the name of Mr. Pump has caught wind of Mr. Ick's intransitive choices, and he seeks to use the money pump to take Mr. Ick for all he's worth. Let's say Mr. Ick has a ticket to go to that haunted house alone. He's shaking in his boots, but he's excited for the opportunity. On the other hand, Mr. Pump, in preparation for his devious plan, has acquired tickets for bringing your family to the haunted house and a ticket for the haunted hayride. Now remember, Mr. Ick actually preferred the haunted hayride to going to the haunted house alone, so he's willing to give Mr. Pump the ticket to solo the haunted house and some money in exchange for the haunted hayride. Like we said, Mr. Ick prefers the haunted hayride to going to the haunted house alone, so he would certainly give Mr. Pump the solo haunted house ticket plus some money, let's just say plus one unit of money for Mr. Pump, in exchange for his preferred option, the haunted hayride. But then Mr. Pump also knows that Mr. Ick would rather go to the haunted house with his family then go to the haunted hayride, and so he's again able to make an exchange. Mr. Ick would happily give Mr. Pump his ticket for the haunted hayride, plus a little extra, to get his preferred option of a ticket to the haunted house with his family, and so Mr. Pump has gained another unit of Mr. Ick's money. But then the villainous Mr. Pump says, oh Mr. Ick, would you rather go to the haunted house alone, or go with your family? You're not a chicken, are you? Bok, bok, bok. And Mr. Ick says, oh no, I'm no chicken. I'm no chicken at all, Mr. Pump. And so he gives Mr. Pump his ticket for the haunted house with the family and a little bit of money to get his preferred option to show off his bravery and go to the haunted house alone. And then Mr. Pump says, oh, Mr. Ick, I have a ticket to the finest haunted hayride. Wouldn't you rather go there? And Mr. Ick says, yes, I would. And so he would gladly give Mr. Pump the ticket to solo the haunted house house, plus a little extra, in exchange for the haunted hayride. And so Mr. Pump has earned yet another unit of money and can continue this sequence of farcical exchanges until he has as much money as he pleases. You can see how quickly those intransitive preferences of Mr. Ick form this cycle which can be exploited by a devious ne'er-do-well. Then the question for rational choice theory is quite evident. It's certainly possible that a real person could have preferences such as this. It's certainly not beyond imagination. We've just imagined it. So what does it say about the model that it assumes a plausible situation like this couldn't exist? Well, it may be argued that a rational actor would certainly be aware aware of a cycle of intransitive preferences they have, and thus they may refuse to do any sort of business that travels along that cycle. Although in that case it begins to beg the question of what preference would even mean. If Mr. Ick does indeed prefer the haunted hayride to going to the haunted house alone, yet he wouldn't trade one plus a little bit for the other. What does it even mean to have the preference? If I claim to prefer A to B, but would only be willing to engage in an exact exchange between them without any additional compensation, would it not be more accurate to say I am indifferent between A and B? One very simple way to disregard the importance of this situation in the rational choice model is that anyone who had a cycle of intransitive preferences like this would very quickly be exploited and thus basically booted from the economic model. Once you've been stripped of all your money by being subjected to the money pump, your choices no longer affect anything in the economy, and so the economic model cares not to consider you, and so by insisting that preferences are transitive, nothing is lost. Nothing of value anyways. On the other hand, it may be argued that if somebody's preferences fail to obey transitivity, it could just be that they do so in a much more complicated way that's more difficult to observe than this simple three-choice cycle, and thus such a situation would also be much harder to exploit. Of course, every adherence to or violation of transitivity does come down to three objects, but in the real world there would generally be a lot of other choices as well that could make any potential sensitivity to exploitation harder to detect. 
So in a nutshell, the rational choice model assumes that rational actors' preferences obey transitivity, and the money pump argument is an argument for that, showing a ridiculous thing that could occur if this wasn't the case, if somebody's preferences were not transitive. But what do you think? Is it possible for a rational actor to have intransitive preferences? And what of the axiom of completeness, anyway? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. Read from my fate, twisting to escape this. Try the knot of my, my, my wrist if you can break it. Breaking in my past, I'm making it up fast. So slow down, give me the time so I can fake it. Erase it, don't move words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in the mid if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in the mid.